Here we have a Magewell capture device that was mailed over for repair and the device looks like this. We have what looks like a broken USB socket here and we have an HDMI connector right here. And without wasting any time, let's read what the customer wrote. Majorel HDMI to USB 3.0 capture device and the serial number. And if we go over the description, resolder or replace USB 3.0 socket. Also, please examine component D2, diet array 524 VH, near USB. I damaged it when frying off case. If it tests okay, leave alone, otherwise replace. You can use VLC media player or similar to test device. No drivers required. Thanks, Joe. So the customer mentioned something about a USB 3.0 socket, and I do not see that socket here. And the other thing the customer mentioned was the D2 component, diode array. I do not know what a diode array is, but we're going to have to find out. Now, I have not worked with such a device before, so we're going to have to figure out how to open this one. I do see a seam on the front and one on the back. Yeah, right there. Simple. And the connector, USB 3.0 connector right here. Let's put it on the side. I do not know if we can still use the same connector, but we should have those in stock. And we have the motherboard. It came right off. No screws, nothing. The card looks something like this. And I think this device is about $300. Maybe more. Let's see how much that device is. Or if it's even worth it. If that device is $100, then we're not going to work on it. Because it's going to cost more to fix than to buy one. So, mage well, USB to HDMI. Exactly $299. All right, so it's worth it. Let's take a look at the board. And the USB connector is broken off from right over here. And the good thing is we do not see any ripped pads. And how about the connector itself? We have all the pins on the connector, and that's good. So we can reuse the connector. And we can solder that connector right over here. I do not see solder in the holes. Strange how that connector broke off. It did not rip off any pads and no solder in the holes. Talk about weak solder. That's the thing with unloaded solder. It's brittle. It breaks easy. But where is that D2 diode, diode array the customer is talking about? He may be talking about this one here. So we're going to have to replace this component. But the question is, where are we going to get another component like this right now? I mean, all I can think right now is to grab maybe an Xbox motherboard. I have a lot of boards here. PlayStation. Asus boards. And this one is the Xbox One X motherboard. We should have... A similar component yeah one two three four five pins and this one is one two three four five hopefully it's the same size if you look here we have one two three four five pins on each side and that's a filter array i do not really care about the model of the chip or the reading the numbers on the chip it will work just fine and assuming the component on the xbox board is the same size, it should work. I mean, right now, if you measure in ohms mode, we should be measuring around zero ohms. Let's try it. Make sure this is not a resistor or anything like that. Yeah, zero ohms. And this one, we have a zero ohm reading, good. So we can safely remove the component from the Xbox board and solder it on here and it will work 121%.
We're gonna apply flux. The original Amtec 559 flux by Inventec. And we are a distributor of the flux. You can log into our website, northbridgefix.com, click on shop, and you can buy all the tools that we are using here. Everything from soldering stations, hot air stations, thermal cameras, tweezers, flux, braid, pliers, cutters, everything that you need. Everything is stocked and all orders ship out same day. We were out of stock on the hot air stations and soldering stations, thermal cameras, grinding pan, but we have them all in stock right now and we have more stock on the way. Turn on fume extractor. And fume extractors, we only have about seven pieces left, the NF.fume, but we have more on the way. So if you are looking for a fume extractor, we have a video on it. You can watch the video. One of the best fume extractors for the price. Three filtration system. And compact. Just search for nf.fume and you can watch the video. I try to make a video every once in a while talking about some of the tools that we sell in the shop here but I do not have videos on all the tools, but I like to mention the tools that we use every time I make a video. So you know what that tool is and what it does and how it works. I mean, even the solder roll that we used when we applied solder onto the pads is sold in our shop and it's a premium solder roll. We sell the 0.3 and 0.8 millimeter rolls. And one roll will probably last you a few years. I use it every day and the roll is still full. Let's grab this filter. Of course, we're gonna focus. And up to this day, people ask, which microscope are you using? Just log into Northridge Fix. This is the Northridge Fix V2 microscope. We sell the microscope along with the lens, two Barlow lenses, ring adapter but not the articulating arm. But we have those on the way and we should get them by March 13, I think. The arm is very heavy and it's being shipped by boat and not by air. And perfect. The filter is the perfect size, amazing. I mean, how lucky can we get? Look at this. Wow. The filter is just the right size. Awesome. Now all we have to do is solder the connector. And we'll see if we can test it. I do have VLC installed on the computer, so we'll see. We have somebody standing at the door and the door is locked. And right now it's almost six o'clock, 5.50. I do not want any more customers to come in so I can make this video in peace. So let's start by wicking off leftover solder from the pads and we're gonna start fresh. And did I lose the connector? That's the question. I do not see it on my bench. Where did the connector go? Looks like the ghost borrowed it again. Right there, I got it. They put it back right on time. They always borrow stuff from me. And then when I run out of patience, looking for that part, they bring it back. What can you do? Sharing is caring. And now we can apply solder. And how about we use our amazing NF.mini pen 
to apply solder. We sold over 1,200 pieces of the NF dot mini pen, and customers ask, do I have to press on the button for this pen to activate? The answer is yes. You have to touch the button, not press on it. There's a button in the front here. You do not have to press on that button. It's capacitive touch. Just touch that button and the pen will activate. Temperature is going up. As soon as you release your finger from that button, after a few seconds, it will start to go back down. The reason I like this feature is because if you forgot this pen on your bench, it's not going to stay on all night. It's going to turn off. Touch the button, it's going to activate. Remove your finger, it's going to deactivate. If you are wearing a glove, it's not going to work because the button needs to sense your finger. Okay? I mean, what is so special about this pen? Small. The pen is small, just like my Weller station, my $1,200 Weller station. Look at the size of the pen on the Weller station and look at the size of the pen on this NF dot mini soldering pen. And what I like about it also is the size of the tip. The size of the tip is about an inch or maybe less than an inch. The smaller the tip, the more precision. You see some soldering pens in the market where the pen is that long. You do not have precision when the tip is too long. I mean, it's not really much about the pen, but it's the tips that we are using. I've had that very same tip for maybe four or five months. I use it every day, every single day, and the tip is still going like new. It grabs solder like it's a new tip, and you'll see. It's the tips that makes this pen special. We sampled a lot of tips, and we went through a lot of tips. And I can tell you the tip that we are using right here is one of the best tips in the market, and maybe better than the JBC tips. I know this from practice. I use this tip every single day, every single day. And I'll show you how that tip grabs solder. A lot of people tell me my tip does not grab solder. What's going on? You have a cheap tip. That's why it's not grabbing solder. Watch. You see? Look at how nicely it grabs solder. Okay, so we have enough solder on the tip. Let's go ahead and solder pin number one. We're gonna solder pin number two. Pin number three. Very nice. Moving along. Just look at how smoothly we are able to solder that connector with this precision pen. Let's clean the tip and go over this one more time quick. And we're going to apply a tiny bit of flux. You can never have enough flux because flux helps with the flow of solder. Try to solder without flux and you'll know the difference. And what if we turn our empty glare light on? All right, let's check and make sure the pins are good. Let's go back to our ring light. And we're gonna check on pin number one. Solid, 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 and solid. And we're gonna go over those pins here. Wow, amazing. We're almost done. We need to solder the back. And now we're going to use a bigger tip because remember the end of that mini pen is used for small components and microscopic work. A big pad like this will need, will require a bigger tip. The bigger the tip, the more heat transfer. And we need a lot of heat transfer right here. We may need a bigger tip also. Let's try this one here.
and we're done. And moment of truth, we soldered the USB 3.0 connector and we replaced the filter component. I do have a USB 3.0 cable plugged into the computer and let's see. Plug it in, yes, yes, right there. We see a red light and we see a green light, awesome. What device am I going to plug into this capture card to test? How about we plug the thermal camera? Let me unplug it from the HMI switcher right here. Uh, we're going to plug it right over here. Okay. And now we're going to open up VLC. And to be honest, I never used VLC to capture a device. But we should be able to figure it out. Open up the VLC player. I mean, I can do it with OBS, but you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So let's use VLC and try to figure out how to capture the thermal camera here. Right there, open capture device. And network, disk, file, video device name. Oh, okay, okay, right there. That's ours, AV HDMI video. That's the capture card that I use for recording. And this one must be the one for the customer. Let's click on it, make sure the thermal camera is on. Advanced options, maybe? No. Just play. Yes, yes. yes. We are able to capture the device, and I did hear my voice. You see? And if you look here, the image is actually flipped, but I'm not going to go over VLC and figure out how to unflip the image or how to... I cannot talk when hearing myself. Hold on, hold on. I do not know how to unflip the image in VLC. I'm not going to go over VLC settings and how to unflip the image, but we are able to capture the camera, the floor camera, and we're going to deem this device a fix. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video. And we're going to unplug the USB cable. We're done.